Hi students, welcome to lesson number 25, Housing and Urban Problem. Introduction to the lesson. A social problem is hindrance and a form of pathological condition and a source of disorganization. Social problems are the problems concerning society. A society that strives to improve must be keenly aware of its social problems. Social problems are behavior patterns or conditions that are considered objectionable or undesirable by many members of a society. These members recognize that the corrective policies, programs or services necessary to cope with and reduce the scope of these problems. In every society, there are a number of social and economic problems. There are many problems in urban societies such as poverty, slums, overpopulation, unemployment, crime, juvenile delinquency, prostitution, beggary, health problems, sanitation problems, nutrition problems, etc. Urban problems are due to heavy population which is concentrated in the limited space. People in urban areas lack intimate relations due to its heterogeneous nature. There is increased social disorganization formed in urban societies. These are a consequence of the rapid population growth a lack of capital to invest and a very pure, poor or outdated infrastructure. Now the learning objectives. After reading this unit, the students will be able to understand or describe the process of urbanization and urban environment. You will also understand the problems of housing and slums in urban India. Now we will discuss about urbanization and urban environment. India is the second largest population giant in the world with current population of 1.0 billion according to the census 2001. Of this about 285 million people or 27.8 percent of the total population reside in the urban areas of the country. India in 2001 had 10.02 percent of the world's urban population and 21.10 percent of Asia's world population. In fact, India's urban population is larger than the total population of small countries like France and Germany and larger than the total population of the big countries like Brazil and USA. Again, it is larger than the total population of parts of continents like Eastern Africa, Western Asia and Western Europe and larger than the total population of the whole continent of Australia. The level of urbanization in terms of the proportion of urban population to total population is low in India, but the urban population in absolute terms is very high. Moreover, most of the urban population is concentrated in the class 1 cities accounting for 65 percent of the total urban population and these cities are expanding at a faster rate than average population growth. A more disaggregated levels of analysis reveals that the million plus cities or the metropolitan cities of India are growing very rapidly and the numbers have constantly increased from 12 in 1981 to 23 in 1991 and 35 in 2001. The total population of this metro accounts for nearly one third of the total population and 10.5 percent of India's total population in 2001. Again, over 50 percent of the population of these metros live in the five giant cities like Mumbai which consists of 16.3 million population, Kolkata 13.2 million population, Delhi 12.7 million population, Chennai 6.4 million and Bangalore 5.7 million. The population in these cities grew by 52 percent higher than the growth of urban population in India. But compared to the last decade, the pace of metro polarization has slowed down and the 12 cities grew at a faster rate than the existing cities. Surat recording the highest growth of 85 percent. Rapid urbanization marked by population explosion in the Indian cities can be largely attributed to the large scale rural to urban migration. Due to uncontrolled urbanization in India, the quality of life is under threat particularly in the big cities. Environmental degradation has been occurring very rapidly and causing excessive air and water pollution, water shortage in water scarce regions, 
problems of disposal of solid and hazardous waste, noise pollution, housing shortage and mushrooming of slums in most of the metropolis of India. Today, the social environment of the city is also under threat. On account of peculiar problems like unchecked migration, illegal settlements, diverse social cultural disparities, uneven distribution of incomes, the phenomena of urban poverty, etc., the metropolitan cities are facing increased criminal activities. Organized groups, gangsters, professional criminals, and in human, even youth and juveniles find crime as a shortcut for a lavish life in these cities. Moreover, unabated population increase has also led to a pressure on the existing physical and social infrastructure of the cities like power supply, supply of portable water, urban transport, educational and health institutions. Today, urbanization in India is characterized by unplanned and uncontrolled growth leading to urban sprawl. Land use planning and the pattern of development relationships between residential areas and industrial areas, commercial and office complexes have a considerable impact on the environment. Most of all, appropriate infrastructure provision has not kept pace with economic growth. Consequently, the environment of urban areas particularly of larger cities has been deteriorating rapidly. Urban local bodies in India are faced with a plethora of issues that directly impact their capacities to manage multiple services delivery while simultaneously addressing environmental concerns. These include multiplicity of organization, second, inadequate resource mobilization, Third, lack of capability to adopt proper corporate planning. Fourth, lack of information and information system and inadequate monitoring of policy implementation. Where the municipalities are struggling to provide the basic amenities to citizens, issues of environmental pollution of hazard management are not accorded priority till matters reach the proportion of a crisis. Now, we will try to understand urbanization and problem of housing. Housing in India varies greatly and reflects the socio-economic condition of its overpopulation. Housing is a basic need of every human being just as food and clothing. It is very fundamental to the welfare, survival and health of man. It is one of the important components for human resource development. In urban areas, the problem of housing is severe. There is a wide gap between the demand and supply for houses. This gap is responsible for growth of slums in cities where crores of people live in most unhygienic and unhealthy conditions. Hence, housing is one of the best indicators of a person's standard of living and its place in the society. In developing countries, Poor housing delivery has been attributed to inadequate mechanism and systems for land allocation, funding, mortgage institutions and infrastructure. Housing may be defined as an architectural unit for accommodation in order to protect the inhabitants from the forces of nature. Housing covers all the supplementary services and community facilities which are essential to human well-being. It includes water supply, sanitation and disposable of water recreation and other basic amenities of life. Thus, housing can be defined as a component of architectural structure within a total system consisting of various settlement variables. The urban housing characteristics for entire India and the four leading metros of Mumbai, Kolkata, Delhi and Chennai reveal the following facts. In Mumbai, 34% of the households lived in semi-pakka and 3% in kacha houses followed by 33% and 9% respectively in Chennai. However, in Delhi, 11% households reside in semi-pakka and less than 1% in kacha houses. It is a good sign for Kolkata that there were only 5% semi-pakka houses and almost negligible kacha houses. This shows that in Mumbai and Chennai, housing situation is poorer than Kolkata and Delhi. On the other hand, the houses in these metros are very much overcrowded. 
more than three persons residing in a single room is the condition of 56 percent of the population of Mumbai followed by 43 percent population of Kolkata, 30 percent population of Chennai and one fourth of the population of Delhi. Further, five and more persons residing in a room such miserable condition was faced by 28 percent of population of Mumbai followed by 17 percent of the population of Kolkata and about 10 percent population of Delhi and Chennai both. Looking at the sanitation conditions of the metro cities, it is apparent that almost universal flush toilets facilities unavailable in Mumbai followed by 90 percent in Kolkata and 89 percent in Delhi. However, the matter of fact is that more than half of this facility in Mumbai is available in public places and not within housing premises. Kolkata and Delhi might have a similar situation. Again, it is unfortunate to note that about 9 percent population of Kolkata, Delhi uses pit toilet. Further, what is worse is that 9 percent of Chennai population does not have toilet facility at all followed by 6 percent in Delhi. This shows the inadequate planning of municipal corporations because of unprecedented population pressure. As regard to the source of safe drinking water, the situation is the best in Mumbai where almost the entire population has access to piped drinking water. However, a substantial population is dependent on hand pump in Kolkata that is 35 percent followed by Chennai 31 percent and Delhi 13 percent. On the other hand, in Chennai, 6 percent of the population is dependent on the sources other than hand pump and tapped or piped water. Considering the methods of purification of drinking water, it is very strange that half of the urban population in India does not purify drinking water at all. In Kolkata, three-fourths of population do not purify drinking water followed by 62 percent of the population of Delhi. However, the situation is slightly better in Mumbai and Chennai where 27 percent and 43 percent population respectively do not purify drinking water. But at the same time, majority of Mumbai's population purify drinking water by staining only. The situation reveals the danger of waterborne diseases. This may cause serious health problems especially to slum dwellers and low income groups that too mostly among the children and infants. What is housing problem? Housing problem is one of the social problems produced by capitalism manifested as a particular form of housing needs with the growth of the urban population and the transformation of a dwelling into a commodity. There is a sharp deterioration in the working people's living conditions and huge rise in apartment. The housing problems and the housing needs are manifested in overcrowding poor and inadequate social amenities, unsatisfactory and unwholesome environmental conditions and urban uncleanliness. The absence of open space, the development of the land area leading to overcrowding of buildings, inaccessibility within residential areas and in scarcity and high cost of building materials. According to human development, housing problems result mainly from unprecedented growth of urban population. Now, the issues related to housing schemes in the 21st century. There are various programs which have come up for the housing problem. The first one is the Jawaharlal Nehru National Urban Renewal Mission, which was launched in December 2005, which also aims at a reform driven plan developmental transformation of, of India's urban areas. The mission acknowledges the responsibility entrusted upon cities to act as a primary agent, engine and catalyst of the process of sustainable growth and development. Accordingly, this program aspires to create economically productive, efficient, equitable and responsive cities. Two of the submissions under this program are dedicated to urban housing problems. That is the first one, the basic services for the urban poor, which is being managed by the Ministry of Urban Development. The BSUP is designed for the upgrade and improvement of the condition of slums. 
settlements, assuring universal access to the basic amenities such as water and sanitation and social infrastructure such as health, education and social security. Second, integrated housing and slum development program. This particular program seeks to tackle poor housing for urban slum dwellers in cities and towns as per the 2001 census, excluding those who, which were being targeted under BSUP. And the third program is Rajiv Awas Yojana program. With the motto Slum Free India, the scheme was launched in June 2011. The motivation underlying the program acknowledges the failure of the market and the government to secure the rights of the urban poor to a decent and dignified life. Its material objective is to provide affordable housing with basic municipal services. The scheme is not confined to bridging the gap of material deprivation. Rather, the vision of the scheme understands that slum proliferation is an unfortunate outcome of a chain reaction which is triggered in turn by lack of employment. Under the scheme, the government intends to circumvent the forces that are responsible for the failure of the market and the government in accommodating the housing and other basic needs of the urban poor. It is hoped that this exercise prevents any further slum proliferation. The scheme also emphasizes the need to bring informal settlements within the coverage of the formal economy. The race strategy is two-pronged. The first component involves slum redevelopment, preferably in situ development of existing slums, while the second seeks to make provisions that curb future creation of slums. The affordable housing in partnership belong to the second component of the race scheme. The AHP scheme envisions public-private partnership in making provisions for affordable housing stock both on rental and ownership basis. The fourth major program is the Pradhan Mantri Awaz Yojana which was launched by the Narendra Modi government in 2015. It aspires to eliminate urban housing shortage in India by the year 2022. Both the JNN, URM and RAY schemes have been criticized for the poor quality of the houses. In some instances, they have been worse than their habitation in the slums, even in size. Moreover, the housing projects have been located in areas lacking trunk infrastructure. Many beneficiaries face lack of electricity, water supply, sewerage and solid waste management in their new residence. Often, open spaces around the newly constructed houses are reduced to serving as garbage dumps. Houses have structural defects as well, like damp indoor walls, leaky ceilings, and in some cases, houses have been constructed in areas distant from livelihood and income earning opportunities with inadequate provision of public transport. As a result, much of the housing stock created under the government schemes remains vacant. Slum dwellers value their social networks to the extent that they prefer remaining in slums over newly constructed homes. Such social networks are a source of informal credit and importance that support the slum dwellers during financial difficulties. Overall, both the program schemes have failed to alleviate housing poverty. Instead, the programs have tended to disrupt their means of employment and social networks to compel them to accommodate poor housing standards. To begin with, the JNN URM mission document itself contains contradictions. On the other hand, it aspires to build economically productive and equitable cities. It regards an initiative of generating wage and fresh employment opportunities as inadmissible on the other. Furthermore, let alone creation of the new employment, the relocation exercise executed under the mission has largely failed to preserve existing employment opportunities of the slum dwellers. Compounding the problem is that the implementation of the policy has failed to realize the promise of delivering basic services to all. Productive cities are founded upon productive workforce. After all, and a productive workforce cannot be conceived without access to basic services. 
In the case of Ray, any concrete strategies to tackle lack of formal employment and arrest stump proliferation have not been implemented despite an explicit commitment to do so in the mission document. It may be argued that both JNNURM and Ray have enabled cities to respond the housing shortage by creating affordable houses. However, creating new houses cannot come at the cost of lost employment or low quality of living because these are the ends for which housing is the means. To summarize, in India, approaching housing poverty and slum proliferation outside a holistic framework has caused the failures of various housing schemes that have been attempted over the last 70 years. The government has now started focusing on housing facilities but has not much thought much about solving the problems of housing that are connected with human settlements such as managing and improving the civic services, constructing houses, conserving energy and recycling waste, lack of proper water supply and sanitation facilities for drainage system and garbage disposal are major problems in most of the modern urban centers today.